Okay, everybody, welcome to another episode of Diffused. There it is. All right. We are back again, another week and another, another fun uh, 10 minute or so with another amazing leader, another, another guy, another man in doTERRA. So really great to be here with you. I hope you're having a great week. So today we are honored, we are privileged to have on the line all the way from jazz country, Utah, Mr. Kirk Hamilton, Blue Diamond leader, uh, an amazing guy. And um, I have to say, I have to be honest here, one of my doTERRA heroes and just, just a you know, top bloke. Um, so he's, <laughs> he's, he's, waiting, he's looking, looking um, relaxed and comfortable over there. And uh, come in, Kirk, you there, buddy? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for having me. I'm here in the home office in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Awesome. Awesome. Isn't it amazing technology we can have you online? So look, um, Diffused is all about the insights into the men of doTERRA. So it's going to you know, hopefully um, give everybody uh, a chance to see the, the other side of things. I and mean, we, we, we hear a lot from the women of doTERRA, but it's great to hear from the men. So let's go, guys. Um, um, 10 questions, Kirk. And I have to say, we normally let the guys know about the questions uh, beforehand, but I haven't even told Kirk because I know he's super capable Super, um, <laughs> but, um, spontaneous with his answers. I, I, I smell disaster. I smell disaster coming on here, maybe. Uh, but uh, I, just, just, if you ask me, like, well, Kirk enjoys long walks on the beach and virgin mojitos. And <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Look, um, let's go with the ten questions. Let's keep the um, the answers uh, nice and and uh, and quick. Here we go. We're gonna actually, we're gonna, um, my super assistant here is gonna time the answers, so you might hear a little time ago. Okay, Kirk Hamilton, question one. What is your favorite essential oil uh, or a product perhaps? And um, yeah, keep it, keep it easy and, and flexible. So what's your favorite uh, oil and why? You know, <laughs> that's the funniest question because every time I'm talking about oils, I'll say, this is my favorite oil. And then I realize I've said that like 10 times. Okay. So I kind of defer to the product of Lifelong Vitality. And the reason I do that is because it has essential oils in it and also the funny thing is, is that every time I had asked Dr. Hill about whatever the question was, people come to me with everything, right? I don't know. So I'd try to research or ask Dr. Hill back in the day and he would say, well, are they on lifelong vitality? Because it was kind of the building block for everything else. Plus it was getting you literally the best of essential oils internally every day with that also. Okay. So I, I would have to say lifelong vitality is something that I've faithfully taken every day, even if I had missed something else or whatever type of thing right sure. um but probably as far as essential oils I'll, I'll just add on guard into that because i think having a, a strong immune system I, I teach aroma touch so talking about keeping immune system high is one of those main things for aroma touch uh, i i really buy into that and so on guard the on guard and the time is up as i say on guard <laughs> all right right well, that's great. Um, Lifeline Vitality now is available in Australia, so I don't know if you knew that, but we, uh, we're very excited to have uh, LLV here as well. Good answer. Yes. All right, we're, we're motoring. We're, we're on top of things now. Question two, tell us about your first introduction to the oils. Uh, I know that was some time ago now. You've been with doTERRA since the beginning, so um, maybe share you know, maybe a story there. This might be interesting, especially for you men, is that uh, we're so into sharing uh, essential oils, but that was not my experience. Elise Shedeby uh, demanded, <laughs> well, kind of exaggerating, but kind of in a way, it, this was a business thing for us. Uh, we saw essential oils, didn't know much about them. We saw those a very um, sticky product, if you will. People loved them. We didn't quite understand why, but we saw the leadership, of course, the, the owners of doTERRA, and we saw this retention rate. And so uh, uh, my introduction purely was literally on a business side. My wife liked the oils. She'd had some samples from Teresa Harding, our neighbor. Um, but literally we saw this as an amazing opportunity, which everyone should see that because it is an amazing product, an amazing ownership team, amazing retention rate. And that's what makes a good business opportunity. It's, it's hmm. for those of us that do, it's a no brainer. It may, might take a few steps to see that, but the truth is, uh, um, I think that as, as, as men, probably too, I don't think it's gender specific, but as we share, we want people to have an experience because the product's legit and that's a big base of what we do. But I think we can speak in those terms to people of introducing them to a great concept in general from a health standpoint and, and, a, and a financial standpoint. As I look back at how some of us actually built the beginning of our businesses, that's how we did it. 
It wasn't even, you know, we didn't give a sample. We didn't do things like that. We talked to people at the level they were ready to hear and understand. So uh, that's kind of how I was introduced to it. Um, the oils themselves did come through education, experience, experiences, things like that, which were fantastic, of course. But uh, I think that's um, probably reflected yeah. in a lot of men, you know, like that's, that's how it rolls with a lot of us saying. Good answer. Yeah. Good answer, mate. You're on a, you're on a roll yourself. So look, uh, how, question three, how did you feel when the oils you know, first came into your home? Was there a general uh, emotion you could reflect on? Yeah, so I mean, I mean, uh, being completely honest, the very first time, this is when Teresa's giving samples, I thought they were just so hokey. I mean, honestly, because I hadn't tried them, right? I mean, it really is true. You have to have an experience. I came home one night um, from work and, and um, you know, Jennifer, she, she, I called her on the way home and said, do you need it? She goes, no, it's been a bad day. Just get home. Kids are sick, yada, 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 whatever. Like, you know, and she, dinner's already ready, so don't worry about picking up a pizza or whatever. So I walk in the house. I don't know, wait, I think she said, Something like, you know, maybe you could come home and fix it. And that's what she said, or help me with it. And so I came in, I could smell something. <laughs> and I thought she was cooking. I said, well, I thought you wanted me to cook something. I, are we having pizza? Is that spaghetti? I, but it was oregano all over the kid's feet, right? So I was just like, whoa. So the truth is, that was my first experience that I was just like, oh, you've got to be kidding. What is Teresa giving us? So it was pretty funny. But again, once the oregano got put on my feet or the on guard put under my tongue, or whatever it was. For me, actually, digestion was one of the first experiences I had. I mean, boom. Like Tums, if I got heartburn, Tums would take time. Yeah. Digestion was instant. And I was just like, okay, weird still, but but I you got my attention now. So yeah. it was yeah. cool. So awesome. it's all about the experience, man. I'll tell you, it's crazy, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Well, how... Um... Oh, sorry. What do you enjoy about DoTerra as as a company? You know, and, and of course, you'd have lots to draw upon there. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, honestly, this Mark. I mean, friendships. You know, you guys. We've had the privilege of having you guys in our home. I, I've got people literally around the world. There's no way, God's green earth, that I would know any of you guys yeah. without DoTerra. So I count that as among the richest blessings. Um, is is the the, the camaraderie, the friendship, the, the, the community that we've developed literally around the world. Uh, so people, I mean, it's definitely what makes me do what I want to do. Um, yeah. The product, like I said, is great. The mission's great. If it was just a company that I believed in and liked, yeah, sure, I could network it just through referrals and telling people, yeah, go to this website, it's great. Mm -hmm. But I do what I do because I care about people and helping them, <clears throat> empowering them with health everybody needs that. And then finding the people that are ready to also partner with me. I, I, I want, I, I love partnering with everyone. I mean, that's the fun part. So yeah, this, I mean, this, this is my favorite thing right here. Let's awesome. do it again. When's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So what, that sort of leads on to, uh, I guess, of what I'd love to know your opinion on what makes doTERRA different in, as a company, you know, what in a nutshell. Yeah. You know, it, that's, and sorry, Jody, give me an extra minute on this one. Um, <laughs> Living here in Utah, living here in Utah, we're not the only hotbed. There's Florida, there's Texas, California, but Utah definitely is, is one of the hotbeds for network marketing starting. I mean, we have big, huge companies. Uh, New Skin, we kind of alluded to last night when I was with David Sterling, I think in 1984 is when it started. So it's 30, whatever that adds up to. Um, I'm not good at math. <laughs> Neither am I. It's the money makers right here, you know. It's, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, it's you know, so so I've and, and Mona V is another example. Not that I want to be talking about other companies, but I've kind of had this unique view, if you will, looking at other companies and a few where I've had friends in them that have done well, and and so it's not so much that other companies can't exist, can't be successful, can't make money. We, for the lack of a better reason, other than the things I already mentioned, product retention rate. I mean, our business, and, and most of you that do this, I, I challenge everybody to look at their back office and look at uh, the business tab. And doTERRA has, um, maybe it's the team tab, actually. It's one of the two tabs. I just forgot right now. But you click on that, and it has a default setting of premieres and above. And if you look at premieres and above, that, that's, you know, there's a lot of elites out there and even below that are building and trend getting there. But for the most part, your premiers and above are people that are building the business, you know, give or take. And that's about 1% of most people's back office of their whole global number. 
Yeah. And so that's amazing. That's what makes us different. Um, I talked to another one of our team guys in Maryland. He's uh, um, he's super funny. He was a leadership with us in, our, in um, Long Beach in California. He came up to me and, and he liked how I was talking, right? As a man, business, things like that. And he said to me, he says, I really was refreshing hearing you that perspective. And I said, oh, thank you very much. He goes, but you got to understand. He says, I've been doing that mark marketing for years. And he says, I don't think people in doTERRA understand what they have. Mm. And, and I said, yeah, no, I think you're right. He goes, no, no, you don't understand. Like I came from Amway mm. and he was being funny, right? But he goes, no, no, did you hear me? Amway. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he was kind of slamming his old company a little bit. But what he was saying is that in that community, people only stayed if they were making money or breaking even, or, or maybe if they were really seeing the value of the self-improvement, which Amway is good at. And, and so it really wasn't anybody else. He was fascinated, as am I, the fact that I have 80, like literally probably 90% of my business is, is customers, literally customers, people that aren't having a desire to really build the business. And it's sticky. It stays there. So you just don't see that. And all these other companies, even though some have been successful, long, longevity, like new skin, you, you just, it, it's just different. They start the same way. They, they have a comp plan first. Yeah. And they have a leadership team first, then they go find a product. And that's legitimately the fact. I mean, I know that for a fact with how one company in particular started here in Utah. I think most of them are like that. So, sorry, I know that's got to be the longest answer because we really are unique. And, uh, and, and we, we, just, we just do things differently from top to bottom, left to right. It's just, it really is amazing. And I, I, it's what makes us us. There's nobody else that's hit a billion dollars as quick as we have. Because the aforementioned new skin is who I'm referring to, took them 14 years. Wow. Now they're a successful long, longevity company, but come on, we did it in seven and we're only nine years old now. We're approaching 2 billion probably. I'd say, I wouldn't be surprised if they tell us that at convention, but for sure 2018 will be a $2 billion year. Wow. So it, it's just unprecedented. And if, if that doesn't get somebody on the bandwagon of saying this is an opportunity, you just can't like, let go by yeah because it's, it's like, not hype either it's not hype it's so no hype. there's no hype in this company absolutely yeah. that sort of leads us on really to um to the next question so uh question six what do you say to men um and I, I get this a lot from 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 the women in doTERRA who who their partners are just not convinced so who what do you say to men who aren't convinced about doTERRA and they sort of on the sidelines looking in at their partner doing the business anything you want to so well, it's hard because it's a case-by-case -case basis I've found in how to talk to somebody in that situation. Um, I had a good conversation with an old friend actually used to work for me, and he's in sales in the cell phone business that I used to be in. And I think I'm finally going to get through to him. Uh, we had a really good conversation last Saturday. And because he's in sales, because he's in business, so to speak, any, anybody in that category, those people – are beating their heads a lot of times and getting kicked in the head by corporate, their, their corporations they work for because they pay them just enough to keep them from quitting, but not enough to really get financial freedom. And so uh, what, what I'm, what I'm hoping that people can see when they watch at the beginning, their wife building something is that even if they build something small, the fact is they built it. Goodness sakes. I mean, isn't that amazing? Like let's say a lot of, and again, this, Oh my goodness. I hope this comes out the right way, but a lot, of people, including men, it's not gender specific, have never done anything like this. And so they, <laughs> sorry, Jody, but, they, but they've but they never done anything like this. And so the fact they built anything is quite remarkable, really, isn't it? It is. Compared to some professional who's had training and has done this as a career. Yeah. And so why wouldn't you want to look at this as something that you could have? The, the beauty of what I look at, that what we've been a part of, what we've created ourselves and what we've, what's been done by our team, including you guys, is that nobody can take this away. It's ours. We own our business. And, and I'm not building somebody else's dream. And so it's funny how people will, you know, well, I, I kind of say it biblically, you know, like uh, they'll sell their birthright for a mess of pottage, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and your birthright is to be free. Your birthright is to have your own thing. But yet security of a job, yeah, I mean, there's some security for sure short term, but it's, it's just not the answer. So I – I would want them to be open-minded and see that hindsight's twenty twenty. You can wait another 10 years and look back and go, oh, wow, geez, Doterra's the biggest of all time, which it's already starting to become. We're, we're the biggest in the United States already. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, we do. But we are the biggest already in the United States, and that's of people who like Newskin that have been around for way longer than us. So 
I, I just really beg people uh, to have an open mind and not to put it off like it's some hobby. Um, well but there's really a really thing going on here. Absolutely. Sorry for waffling on. No, 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 no. No, I love it. <laughs> All right, mate, look, um, this is a bit of a, I get a left field one. How do you see men's, men's health at the moment? Is it something you've, you've thought about at all? Well, you know, it's funny. I was, uh, I was doing some service this morning and I was listening to two other men um, and I, I couldn't, it wasn't a position where I could go talk to them. I, I, I'm hoping I can bump into them again, but I actually heard them talking about cholesterol and different things and, and they, were, they were having a discussion. So I know it's on people's minds, especially as they get older. These men were probably in their at least 60s, I would say. And so that, that's the interesting thing. Uh, I just turned 50 last uh, in March, and uh, it, it's interesting because I never thought I'd be here, but here I am. And I still feel relatively young, and obviously because of doTERRA, I think I'm very healthy uh, for the most part. I, you know, not perfect for sure. I got to eat better and some different things like that. But but the point is, is that the the older we get, we start seeing health catch up with us, and it becomes more important. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that, uh, that there's a lot of millennials, and then in between me and the millennials, a big gap. That, that people, again, it's case-by-case case basis. I'm very, very, uh, um, have admiration, I guess, for people that work hard to keep themselves in shape and do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's more to it than just the exercise, right, and things like that. Yeah. Um, um, and, and I think that that's where doTERRA comes in, and looking at a, a lifestyle of prevention, uh, immune building. The, the, I mean, really, when you're looking at it, um, in a very simple layman's terms, the lack of health or, or, or being sick, as we call it, is, is either your immune system being compromised, uh, any, kind of, uh, um, any kind of inflammation, and uh, any kind of stress. If, you're, if, if one of those things are happening, and in most men's lives, it's, it can be all three, even if they're in good shape. Because inflammation would be from, if they're exercising hard, can be from even just from the exercise. Stress is always there for everyone. Uh, most men have super high loads of stress because of their provider, their family, uh, husband, you know, father, that kind of thing. Um, you know, and, and, and so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, to me, it's, it's, it's more important than what they will give it attention to in middle age. And then they'll pay anything to get it back when they become my age and older. <laughs> so yeah. take some planning. I think there's some reality checks a lot of us need to have in that area. Very true. Well said, mate. Look, um, we actually touched on it before. Um, I mean, you, you've, you've got optimism for this company and its future. So what do you see as the future of essential oils in the world? I mean, is it something you, and they talk about an oil in every home and you think that's possible? Yeah. You know, um, again, last night, Laria, <laughs> I, I still haven't gone back and read, watched the tape because I was driving in the front seat, but uh, you know, we had our little, little film we did last night with them. And she started letting some cat out of the bag. I'm not sure what she was referring to, but well, actually I do know what she was referring to. I just didn't hear what, what the details days. Oh no, no, we can't talk about that yet. And it wasn't that he wants to keep it secret. It's just, there's some really, there's some relationships being built and things happening here in the United States that will spread everywhere. I know, but it's, it's this mission of wanting to really be a disruptor, which really means that the end, the end game is not to disrupt, but it's disrupting for the end game to be helping and sustaining a legitimate, sustainable healthcare system here in the United States, states and throughout the world, excuse me. And, and that's exciting to me. They're serious about this. And I could tell last night as we drove home with them, when we were done with that recording, we tried to egg it out of them a little bit more, you know, Hey, come on, what were you talking about? Tell us. And, 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 and Dave just said, look, you know, we're, we're, it's not so much the, the secret. We're just working on these relationships. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's exciting to me to see where we're going to position ourselves. So quite frankly, I would say just sorry to take a little extra time on this, but if you can just, and I don't want people to just be hanger honors, if that's a word, coattail carpet riders whatever you want to say get involved build something right but dave's always said this from day one he, day one he said there's a wave coming now we're already in the midst of that wave and it's a great barrier reef championship surf guy wave that you've never seen before the difference he says is what surfboard are you going to build to ride that the wave's there what, what how are you going to have a surfboard to ride that wave with us and, and that's, that's what you want to do. So building a base, 
doing the hard things that sometimes might be hard for you or for me or for others to go, oh, it's so hard or, you know, whatever, this kind of thing. We, we're working hard as a team to provide more training. I mean, our theory right now is we are a sales company. Mm. We're not a direct sharing company. We're a direct sales company. And we have to face that a little bit more head on and then realize that, that we can't just share something and hope it works out. We have to equip our people with better skills, not, not to be shysters or shady, but to be true good salespeople because good salespeople help solve problems. And if we can equip our people more with that and help them build those surfboards, the wave that's coming, we haven't even seen it yet. Because when we position ourselves in the healthcare industry and doctors are endorsing, even prescribing, and we're part of that, it becomes easier. And, and, and only the people that are going to be already prepared are going to be able to take the advantage of that. The awesome. point where it becomes almost too it's never going to be too late to jump on, but it's going to be a lot harder to say, oh, hey, wait, I'm, I'm here, I'm in, I'm in, you know, like, no, there's going to be people who have more credibility, that have been doing it longer, that, that have a base that can ride that wave better. That's true, yeah. Good analogy for someone who's nowhere near the surf, by the way. Um, <laughs> surf box. Uh, just to clarify, last night uh, you, went to bas- you went to the Jazz versus Warriors game with Dave Sterling and his wife. So, yep. uh, um, I mean, Kirk is, is basically a neighbor of of Dave. <laughs> he um, lives right that way out the window there, about two, uh, three blocks. <laughs> uh, you guys are great friends. So um, fantastic answers, mate. So look, I'm loving it. What is, um, oh, sorry, tell us the last time you shared essential oils with someone. Is there a little story you could tell us, just a quick one, um, a funny story about sharing oils, maybe on the plane or um, anything like that? Yeah, well, actually, we just did a trade show a couple weeks ago, uh, or, you know, a health fair. And uh, we were actually uh, really working on some new of these techniques I was telling you about, of, of really realizing that we, we want to help people with their problems. We're not just here to share something and hope something happens. Yeah. So um, there's really no funny story. It was actually so relieving for us to have success in, in a way that we uh, um, hadn't done, done as well, I guess, if you will. We, we kind of felt like we go into these things with the intent of collecting names and giving out samples. Yeah. and uh, collecting names of the drawing or whatever. But we decided this time we would just hold two bottles. You know, we'd have a wild orange and a peppermint, and we would just hold them with the lids off. And you'd walk by, and I'd say, hey, are you ready for a little pick-me-up? And they'd say, oh, yeah. Well, you know, kind of. Sometimes they'd say no because they thought we were weird. But that's okay because they weren't ready anyway. But people that were willing to be engaged, we put a little drop of each on their, their hand, and they rub them together, do a little... At that, and then we just start having start having a conversation. Utah, right? This is in Utah. Actually, it was in Dallas, Texas. We were oh, we were in Dallas with with right. Jennifer's aunt. Yeah, and uh, it was amazing because we went with the intent to set appointments, not just collect names or hope things would happen. So we gave out no samples. We literally just engaged people. We sold two kits that day, enrolled two people, and we got made ten appointments with people to do uh, to do some um, basic things. And then basically, what we just said is, hey. We, we want to help people with their health goals. We want to hear what you have to say, hear what you need. Again, looking at them as a customer and what their needs were. We wrote down what their needs were. We said, well, listen, you know, we, <clears throat> my part takes about 30 minutes. So I want to tell you a little bit about the most popular kits in the company. And if you have absolutely no obligation to buy anything, but if you see something you like, of course, I'll help you get it. Because that's what I do. I sell, I sell essential oils. I don't say that, but that's the message I'm giving them. So it's been really fun setting appointments this way and, and, and helping people. And so these are some of the things that we're working on to help people better scripting, which they write themselves, but, but scripting on, on being able to really share the oils better. And I'll still use the word share, but it's really putting the people in a position because I really believe that and it's been reminded to me that it's our moral obligation to get these oils to people's homes. When you talk about an oil every home, because the, the blessing we have, as you see up here on my shelf, mm. like they're there for me. I Whatever we need, boom, go pick it up. You know, we're out of that one over there. Here's another one on the shelf. I've got that empowerment, but the person I talk to doesn't. Mm. And if I, if I can't convey that message correctly, who's hurt? Mm. Well, the answer I was giving a few weeks ago was me because I want to sign them up. I want to I wanna advance. I want to help them. But the truth is they're the ones. They're the ones that are hurt because they don't have the oils. You've been doing this for some time and, and, and 
you, you, you still obviously had that excitement about sharing. You still have that excitement in you. You're showing that now about that, that moment where you can, where you can educate and, and empower people, like you say. So it's, it's still there after all these years. Hey. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't stop because it's a, it's a true passion to, to realize that, uh, cause I, you know, I, I've gone through stages where I forget, I mean, I take it for granted cause I've got them, mm. but I forget how many people don't have them and they don't like, if something's wrong, they got to go to a doctor. Something's wrong with us. We've got a whole plethora of things we can try first mm. before we take that step. Absolutely. So. Good story, mate. Look, um, well, look, last question. What is, uh, and, and I mean, Jody and I know you very well. And of course, Jan, and what, what's, what, what's your role in your business? I mean, you do a lot. Um, so just in a nutshell, once again, you know, the primary things that you really do uh, week to week, just quickly with us. Well, again, very unique for me because I was the one that was brought into the business. Jennifer did like the oils. Teresa had given her samples, but she really didn't want to do anything other than be a customer. Yeah. So when, when it came around again, after we'd said, yeah, you know, we're not really interested in doing the business to Teresa, and it came around again with Teresa and Elisa and us, uh, it was really me. I was working with them. Again, like I said, I saw it maybe from a male perspective. I don't think it's gender specific, specific but for me, yes, I saw it in my male eyes, which was, hmm, people love these oils. People keep buying these oils. I mean, it was just, it sounds cold and impersonal maybe, but it was a widget. Yeah. And I market widgets. I could sell widgets. And this was an amazing widget. It's the best one I'd seen in for a long time, even though I didn't understand it. Now, of course, as you saw in the last question, totally different, way more passionate. And it's a deep understanding and all that stuff now. But the reality is, is that uh, that's, that's kind of how it was. So Jennifer, quite frankly, wasn't involved at all at the beginning. Which is quite she rare. loved having the oils in the home. She was very excited that we finally signed up. And that we had oils coming in every month and we were both taking life on vitality, that kind of thing. But she, she just, you know, her role was hold down the fort and my role was go out and do it. And uh, it's just, it's probably in the last two years out of the seven and a half we've been in that she's been much more involved to the point now where she's intimately involved. I mean, we're, we're true partners in this. And, and, and that is unique because it's usually the other way around, as you mentioned before, it's, it's husbands watching their wives going, what the heck is going on, you know, type of thing. Uh, one of my friends here in Utah, is a, he's a crack up, but he's, you know, he's totally involved now and they're the same as Jen and I partners, but it happened the other way around. And his name is Tony and Tony is kind of a funny guy. And he said, yeah, I was the jerk husband. You know, he said, I used to look at my wife and say, well, happy wife, happy life, you know, if she's happy. But, you know, I didn't see it was going to go anywhere. Um, so I used to tell her, I said, oh, sweetie, you just go have fun. Like, being a little condescending, he's doing that for humor, but but he probably did do this knowing him. He says, you go have fun with your little oils and just remember though, sweetheart, hobbies cost money and businesses <laughs> make, you know. And and he said he you know, he gets a laugh out of that because it's funny and stuff. But he said the truth is I realized after when she started making more money than me, mm-hmm. yeah, to kind of put you know, kind of come back and you know, have the tail between the legs and go, okay, I so you were right. I was wrong. And then I just, again, I know this, we have passed this question already, but guys, just one more appeal to that. Don't, don't let that be you. It doesn't need to be see it for what it is coming into it and jump on now because it only makes it for a much easier transition. Uh, that, that's going to happen sooner or later anyway, <laughs> because she's going to knock it out of the park. But yeah. So for, so for me, yeah, it's everything. I mean, as we've built the team, it's the travel, the teaching, I happen to be a Roman touch instructor is one of the original 10 that Dr. Hill started the program with. So in fact, that's actually the first time we met you guys was at that Dr. Hill's Roman touch training in, in the, in Gold Coast. That was awesome. Yeah. Got, yeah. got right down and personal with Mark first time I met him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was good. <laughs> good times. I remember those. those days. And Jody, you know, she's loving the Roman touch uh, training as well. And she often talks about you having inspiration you were in training her. Um, look, that's, that's our 10 questions. And look, I, I can't thank you enough. We've got, a, we've got a guest question, a viewer question from, uh, let me see here. One of our viewers, uh, Kristen from uh, Queens in New York. And Kristen writes, uh, Kirk, we know you're a ridiculously good looking man. <laughs> and uh, we're all very used to blue steel. But can you, can you give us a, a, a brief look at Magnum? Oh! <laughs> Nice one. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. We're very happy with Although that. Although, if, if you could throw something at me right now on the screen, I bet you I could stop it. So, <laughs> Well, as, as we speak, 
this ep- this edition, this episode of Diffuse was brought to you by Deep Blue because all men need Deep Blue in their life. Thanks, Deep Blue. All right, mate. Well, look, um, that's it for us today. Um, <laughs> is that another version of Magnum, mate? That <laughs> You can go and turn left after this too, mate. You can do some left turns. Um, <laughs> fantastic to have you with you, Kirk Hamilton, uh, to be with you and um, to share uh, all that knowledge and your insight into uh, the men of doTERRA and you are certainly one of the best. So thank you all. Uh, thank you so much for your time and your, uh, your input and we will see you soon over there, uh, hopefully in September, yeah? We'll come and... Oh, yeah. And, and hopefully by then we'll have our school We'll have our school completed for, for men that like to do doTERRA, maybe don't do other things very good, yeah. but would like to do other, other oil big, things better. Bit bigger than that, though, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's a box to school about this big, but it's good. So. <laughs> <laughs> we could keep going, but we won't. All right, thanks again, Kirk. Stop we'll us, stop us. <laughs> stop us. Cut it, cut it. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And until next time, um, we'll have a great week. Thanks, guys.